it's Sunday, and we've been uh, we've been sharing a sermon series on Sundays called "The Blessing of Obedience." Today uh, would have been the fourth sermon on this topic, and I don't believe there's any reason for us not to continue uh, in the sermon series, even though Chisamani Kangri, uh, the church is not a building. Uh, the church is when God's people come together in unity. That's where the church is. And I believe there's uh, 50 of us in the room right now. And we're in unity. We're all in one accord. Type amen if we're in one accord right now. If we're in unity. Type amen on the board right now. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. So wherever we are is where, is where the church is. And that's what we're doing right now. We're together in unity in one accord. And now we're going to go into the sermon. But before we get to the sermon, let's pray that God will open up our ears, open up our, our hearts to His Word. Father, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we need Your Word. It's Your Word, Devla, that gives us strength. It's Your Word that gives us faith. It's Your Word that gives us life. So, Father, speak to us right now. I pray for everyone, Devla, that's watching, that your word would touch their hearts and fill their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. The blessing of obedience. God is always right, therefore I must obey. That's right. I've been saying this every Sunday. God is always right, therefore I must obey. We all believe that God is always right. I don't even have to ask you to type amen on the board because we all know this. God is right. No matter what, God is always right. And because God is always right, we must obey everything He says. There's a blessing in obeying God. The blessing doesn't come till we obey God. Burmanus want the blessings to come in their life and after they receive then they choose to obey God. Well, bless me Lord, provide for me, give me everything I need, do this for me, and, and then I'll consider being obedient to your word. Well, it doesn't work like that. It sounds great, but God don't work like that. God is not a, a, a let's make a deal God. He is God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and we don't have a choice. We must obey Him. But in obeying God, God also blesses us. He promises through His Word, and we see it, that when we are obedient to His voice, obedient to His Word, we will see Oswonsomos and the blessings of God upon our families, upon our children, upon our households, and everything we do will be blessed when we are obedient to His Word. Now, today I want to read a, a parable that Jesus spoke of in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 27. And Dick Soma told, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rains came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. Can everyone type the rock on the board right now? Type on the rock. Type it, come on, rock, everybody. Their foundation was on the rock. Now we're talking about, we're talking about building your foundation. We chose this time to teach this message, not because of this time, not because of the storms that we're in. It, it, it all, it's just a coincidence. Well, no, it's not a coincidence. I believe God wanted this word today. In the midst of this storm, God gave us this message. Pachama, I had this planned over a week ago before the storm came. Well, God gave me this word a week before the storm came. But I think it's so appropriate that we learn from this. That we apply these truths to what we're listening to right now to our lives. I'm going to read it again. I'm getting a little bit disturbed from this cell phone. Um... Hold on a second, guys. Let me let me let me fix this phone before we continue. Guys, call Stevie because he's trying to call. Okay. 
Let's get back to it. I'm sorry, guys. I got a little bit distracted there for a minute, but please hang on. All right, let's go back to it. Therefore, anyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rains came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall because he, it had its foundations on the rock. Now, one thing I need you to understand something is this. The rains come, the storm comes, the winds blow. That is a promise from Jesus. But Manus Gindin, that if they give their life to Christ and they become a believer, that they'll never have storms, they'll never have wind, and the storms won't come, and the waters won't rise. Listen to me. If you believe that, you are being led astray. Because of Chachimosu, O Cristo Penag Divano, he said, in this world, you will have trials, you will have tribulations, difficulties will come. He didn't say, maybe they might, he said they will. This is another promise of Jesus. And sure enough, regardless of who you are today, I don't care con sanajes, saeves chogo, saeves barvalo, saeves sukar, saeves jungalo, you will face storms in your life. That's right. Just look out the window right now. If you're in Houston, Texas, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It don't make a difference if you got a $10 million house or if you're living in a pinto, you're in a storm. It don't make a difference if you got a hundred million dollars or if you're broke, you're in a storm. That's right. It don't make a difference if you're a supermodel or if you're ugly, you're in a storm. That's right. It don't make a difference if you're 700 pounds or if you're 60 pounds, you're in a storm. Mm -hmm. Because no matter who you are, you will always go through a storm in your life. The difference is this. Are you going through the storm on a solid rock? On a solid foundation? That's right. Are you built on Jesus Christ? Mm. Or you're built on sand? That's the difference between will you survive the storm? Will you get through the storm? Are you going to come out on the other end? Or are you going to drown in the storm? There's the difference. Now Jesus said something. Therefore everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice. In other words, those who obey my word, those who do what I say, those who put into practice what I'm talking about. The most important part of a house, Mughal that are watching, is not the exterior of the house. The most important part of the house is not the furnishings of the house, Kaisandral. The most important part of any house is the foundation of the house. Right. It's what the house is built on. It's the type of foundation the house is built. That's what's the most important part of the house. And unfortunately, you'll never know, you'll never know the quality of a home. You'll never know the quality of the building until it goes through a storm. You'll never know. You see, on a sunny, beautiful day, every house looks good. When the sun is shining, every house looks fine. They're all standing strong. But when the storm comes, when the wind blows, when the waters rise, that's when the truth will come out. Now pay attention. Luke chapter 6, verse 47. And I want to read this real quick. It's the same story. But Luke says something a little bit different. Luke 40, uh, 6, 47 and 48. Listen, please, very carefully. I will show you what he is like who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice. Pay attention. He is like the man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on the rock. Mm. When the flood came and the turn struck and the house but could not shake it because it was well built. Man. Digging deep to the solid rock. Digging deep to build a solid foundation. 
You see, Bud Manus base their Christian lives and their Christian lives are opral. They're opral. They go through all the motions of Christianity. They refer to themselves as believers in Christ. They'll go to church. They'll sing the songs. They'll attend services, maybe an occasional prayer meeting. But they don't have a solid foundation right. because they never dug down deep. You see, to build a strong foundation, you got to dig deep. And to dig deep, let me just share this with you. To build a solid foundation, it costs us more. It's harder work. It takes more time. I hope you're catching this today. It takes more time. It costs us more money. It takes some work to dig deep. But Pachama, Ajez, right now today in Houston, Texas, I assure you there are people that are so sorry that they didn't build their houses on solid rock, mm. that they didn't build their houses with good foundations, that they didn't dig deeper when they built their houses. There's a lot of people right now that houses are falling in the ground. There's a lot of people right now in Houston, Texas where their houses are sinking because they built it on sand. They didn't go the extra expense. They didn't take the time to build deep into the ground. Right. Right. But the problem payout that are watching and listening to me today, listen, please. I'm here to tell you that storms are coming. I don't want to discourage you about this, but I got to be honest with you. Storms will come in your life, and you must dig deep to survive the storm. And the way we dig deep, the way we get deep rooted, we must start obeying God and do what God tells us to do. Right. We must start putting into practice, hey, what about Lidevnesky right now? I'm sorry, there's no more time to be a half hearted Christian. There's no more time not being obedient to God's voice. There's no more time for partial obedience to God. It's time that we obey everything that God tells us to do. That's right. So that our lives can be built on the solid rock, on the solid foundation. James chapter oh. James chapter 1. If I could find the book of James here. James chapter 1. Verses 22 to... Um, 22 to 25. I think someone told. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Everyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in the mirror. And after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgetting what he looks like. But the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom. See, the law gives freedom. The law of the word of God gives freedom. And continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it. He will be blessed in what he does. So many right now, please not when I won't be Monday, but, but I need to be honest today. I need to be honest, and, I, and it's okay for me to be honest. Say amen if I could be honest today. So many in these days are enjoying the wonderful teachings and preachings that are going on the internet. I thank the Lord for all the messages and all the sermons that we're hearing. I thank the Lord for the faithful ministers of the Word of God that are on internet, that are on Instagram 24 hours a day, and they're preaching the Word of God. And so many people, so many people are talking about the sermons and the messages that they're hearing. But listen to me very carefully, and I need you to catch this today. If all you're doing is listening to the sermons and being entertained by them right. and not putting them into practice, yeah, that's, right. that's right. You're a fool. Mm, that's right. You, I heard the message, Preto Sarda, Dilimo's message. Beautiful. It entertained you. It was great. It gave you goosebumps. But did you do what it said? Right. Mm. Did you put it into practice? Are you applying the truth that you're hearing to your life? Because let me 
tell you what you're doing. If all you're doing is hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and not doing, you are putting yourself under judgment. Because you will one day have to give an account for your life. And I see my motos in Devneska. Lord, I didn't know. What do you mean you didn't know? You've been watching Instagram for 21 days, listening to sermons all day long. Can't give that excuse anymore. When the Bible says forgive, you must forgive. When the Bible says love, you must love. When the Bible says give, you must give. When the Bible says care, you must care. When the Bible says serve, you must serve. God's messages are not a suggestion. God's command are not if you feel like it. God's command is a must. It's necessary. We must apply the truth of God's word to our life. Because only then, is when we will see the blessing of God in my life. I don't want to be harsh today, and I know it seems like I'm harsh, and I'm, and I'm, getting, and I'm, and I'm getting upset. I'm not getting upset. Listen to me. I, I, I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you to start being obedient to God's word because you will not be disappointed. You won't be disappointing obeying God. You won't be disappointing obeying God. You won't be disappointing uh, putting into practice the word of God into your life because you and your family and your household will be blessed by it. You will see the hand of God. You will see the anointing of God. When you start applying the truth of God's word to your life, your prayer life will change. Your worship life will change. Your service to God will change. Your family will change. Your household will change. The peace of God will be in your house. The blessings of God will be in your house. God will open up the floodgates of heaven and pour his blessings into your family. When you take the truth of the word of God and apply it to your life, there will be an overflow. And that's what we need to do. We need to start applying the truth. No longer just being hearers of the word. The Bible says we are deceived if all we're doing is listening and not applying it. Let's not take sermons. Let's not take the word of God as entertainment. That's right. Let's take it as applying the amen. truths of God to our life. Can somebody say amen to that on, on the internet right now? Amen. Can you say amen to that? If you're in agreement with me, say amen to that. And then go back to Matthew real quick. 7, 26, and 27. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. When the rain came down and the streams rose and the winds blew, and beat against the house, it fell with a great crash. Jesus is talking about two builders. They both had a choice to build on rock or build on sand. Sand, of course, is easier to build on. It takes less effort, less cost, um, less time. And on the surface, both houses, if they're side by side, one built on a rock and one built on sand, look exactly the same. They look good. But the one on sand is a facade. It won't last. It really won't. You see, unfortunately, storms are coming. And storms have come. And storms will come. And storms will always test the quality of our commitment to God. that have made a confession of faith to Christ. But all faith will be tested. All faith will have to go through a storm. Your faith will be vindicated by how you stand through the difficult times. And I'm praying today, in the name of Jesus, 
I'm praying today in the name of Jesus that people don't fall again anyway, anymore. Because there's no more time. There's no more time. We're all believing and saying, and we believe that and we're saying amen to that. But if that's true and if you believe that, there's no more time. It's time that we get deep rooted. It's time that we build our foundation on the solid rock. It's time that we start putting into practice what we believe. Amen. And no longer just opralte karazli devleska. Because manahim in vreme. There's no more time. And listen to me very carefully today. You can't start building a foundation. You can't start building a foundation in the midst of a storm. Catch this now. I know some of you are going to get upset with this. Mm. You can't build a foundation in the midst of a storm. That's right. You see, if you're going to build a house as long as to go pour concrete, and if it's raining and the storm is coming, you can't lay down the foundation. I'll tell you right now, you can't. The workers will stop. You can't pour concrete in the midst of a storm. You can't build a foundation in the midst of a storm. You can only lay the foundation. You can only pour concrete on a good sunny day. It's got to be a nice sunny day when you pour the concrete, when the foundation is built. That's right. Catch this now. Butmanus, in the midst of the storm, they want to turn back to God and get their life right with God and they want to build a foundation in the midst of a storm. When all hell is breaking loose against them, that's when they want to start getting committed to God. That's when they want to start putting God's word into practice. Right. After you built your house. It doesn't work that way. You lay the foundation on the good days, on the sunny days. You see, but on the Monday, we have the attitude is, uh, my Anglais, I'll start being faithful to God. My Anglais, I'll start being obedient to God. My Anglais, I'll start obeying the word of God. My Anglais, I'll start putting into practice. My Anglais, I'll start being obedient to God. No, start being obedient to God right now. Even in the good times, especially in the good times, start obeying God. Start laying the foundation now and build on the solid foundation of the word of God, of the truth of God's word now. So that when the storms come, you've already got a solid rock. When the difficulties come, you're built on Jesus Christ. You're built on the truth of the word of God because you have obeyed the word of God. And when you are built on Christ, when you're solid, all you have to say is this. Storms, you come. I'm built on Jesus. Storms come, wind blow, let the water rise, but I'm built on a solid rock because I have been obedient to the word of God and I got the promise of God that he will bless my life and all storms will pass. Because if you're built on Jesus, the storm will pass. We're dealing with a tragedy right now in Houston. Right now it's a tragedy. It looks like the end of the world. But I have hope. I have hope because I know in a few days, these clouds are going to blow out, yeah, the right. water's going to recede, and we are still going to be standing. And the sun is going to shine. Yeah. Because there's better days ahead. Yeah. And I thank the Lord for that. Spiritually, I want you to know something. If you built on Jesus Christ, if you're built on the solid rock, the storms will come, the, the, the difficulty will come, the waters will rise, but the day will come when the clouds will, will go away and the water will recede and the sun will shine again. That's right. That's right. Thank you, Lord. And you need to give God glory because He got you through another storm. Yeah. He got you through another difficulty. Because you obey the Lord. Let's start obeying God's word. Let's start being obedient to God. Let's start being faithful to God. Start forgiving people. And you're, you're, you're bound to drugs. Let it go in the name of Jesus. Amen. Get rid of it. Tukai san yumako, I san pangloke lumia, and you don't know what to do. Get rid of it. Right. 
If you're living a disobedient life to God, stop being disobedient to God. You must obey God. You will never be sorry obeying God. But listen to me. You will always be sorry when you disobey God. Mm. You will always be sorry. Because listen to what I'm telling you. You will always reap what you sow. Little seeds of disobedience will come back to haunt you later on. It will. But on the same token, seeds of obedience. When you start planting seeds of obedience, being faithful to God, and start planting seeds of obedience, you will see the blessings of God and the harvest will come your way. You won't be sorry. And I want to close with this one verse of scripture. Thank you, Lord. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Ton Sama Somotol. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Thank you, Lord. Meditate on it day and night. Meditate on it day and night. That means constantly. To be in your heart, to be in your mind, to be in your mouth. So that you may be careful to do everything written in it. To be careful to do everything written in it. And then here's the promise that comes along with that. Catch this now. Then you will be prosperous and successful. You will be prosperous and successful if you do what the Word of God says. When you apply the truths of God's word to your life, you will be prosperous and successful in everything you do. Thank you, Lord. Your life will be blessed. Your family will be blessed. Your household will be blessed. Your business will be blessed. Your ministry will be blessed. Thank you, Lord. Those around you will be blessed. Because you have chosen to obey God. There's a great blessing in obedience. And I pray in the name of Jesus that the people of God will begin to obey God. It's time that we start being obedient to God's voice. Be obedient to His Word. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord, right now for Your people that they would start to obey You, Mo'odan, that we would all have a heart of obedience, that we will all begin to start obeying You, Devla. There's nothing better in this world than obeying you. There's nothing better in this world, Devla, than doing what you told us to do. Because, Devla, then we will experience you like we never did before. We will experience your blessings. We will experience your peace, your joy, satisfaction, fulfillment in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. So, Lord, give us obedient lives, obedient hearts, a mighty desire to obey you, Lord. I pray for those tonight, devil, that have been backslidden. Those, Lord, that are living in disobedience. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that your Holy Spirit would touch them right now. And restore them. Bring them back to you, Lord. Give them a heart of obedience. Obedience to your word, dear Lord. That we no longer be just hearers. I don't want to be a hearer no more. I don't want to be a hearer no more. I want to be a doer. I want to be a doer. I want to be a doer of your word, Lord. The blessing is yours. Say amen if you want to be a doer. I want to be a doer of your word, Lord. I want to do what you want me to do. I want to serve you, Lord. I want to be faithful to you, Lord. I want to be a doer, Lord. I'm tired of just hearing and not doing. I want to do it, Lord. Let them be doers in the name of Jesus. Start serving the Lord. Start being faithful to God. Start obeying God's word. Start obeying His voice. Don't let obstacles in your way anymore. Come against them in the name of Jesus and go forward serving the Lord. You won't be sorry.
for us in heaven. You won't be sorry. No Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Self, but today I want to agree with you that it's getting ready to get better. Hallelujah. Bobby, do we have any more prayers? All right. Thank you, Lord. I thank the Lord for everyone watching today. I thank the Lord. I was going to share this message today in church, but I had a time to share it with you, 70 people online. Praise the Lord. God bless you. I pray that this word will touch your hearts, and I pray that we start obeying God and putting into practice what we're hearing. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone, Lord. Bless everyone's families, everyone's houses, everyone's children, Lord God. Lord, let the storm go away, Father. Blow it away, Lord. Blow it away, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you.